So, um, Lorena Clark is from York University and she will talk about uh, how art can support and encourage parents to spend more time with their babies. Lorena? Hi. Um, here we go. Can you see my screen okay? Yeah? Okay. <laughs> Okay, so my name is Lorena Clark. I'm really excited to, um, to have the opportunity to present my interdisciplinary MA thesis today. Um, I'm at York University in Toronto. I'm part of Dr. Joseph D'Souza's lab. Uh, he's one of my supervisors, along with Dr. Upali Nanda and also Professor David Scadding. So the title is, I Listen to Your Voice, The Influence of Art and Design on Parental Stress, Experience, and Engagement in the Neonatal Intensive Care Unit. So can large scale environmental graphics installed as art on walls in the NICU be used to lower stress, educate, and encourage parents to spend more time with their infants? So my thesis work focuses on three disciplines considered in interior design art and architectural history and aesthetics, environmental psychology, and then graphic design and visual communication. Um, and then these three uh, disciplines led me to the why, and um, that's where we look to science to explain what's happening in our bodies and brains. And that's the link to neuroscience and Joel and his work. So again, just my, um, my three uh, disciplines, I'm hoping to find better uh, experiences and health outcomes where we collide. So given I'm new to um, the field of neuroscience, I thought I'd provide some context on where I fit into this conversation. So I'm a part-time interdisciplinary MA student. I'm also an interior designer at Stantec in Toronto, and I specially specialize in healthcare design. Um, and I've done a lot of work in pediatrics, and I've been doing it for about 15 years. So my undergrad was... Um, art and architectural history, and I minored in psych. Um, I knew I wanted to be an interior designer, so that was my foundation. Then I spent three years studying interior design after that. So then 20 years later, uh, I'm returning to investigate just one idea uh, to try to better understand the impact that we can have. So the photo on the left is our office in Toronto, and then the, the two photos in the middle are my most recent completed work um, at SickKids, a play area there. So the next few slides, I'm gonna focus on the inspiration for this thesis idea. So back in 2012, we were doing a full renovation of the neonatal intensive care unit at Sick Kids Hospital. Uh, it had a real impact on me. Um, we had big ideas to make it um, a, a much better space. So a few things we were focusing on is um, space uh, for family integrated care, which is obviously most important in the NICU because these infants depend even more on um, family involvement and parental involvement than any other. Um, single rooms as opposed to the current wards, um, thinking about kangaroo care and skin to skin and also the importance of um, breastfeeding and nursing and pumping uh, and also acoustics and privacy. Um, with um, the following goals in mind, to regulate heart rate, better weight gain, reduce length of stay, decrease hospital readmission, and less stress for parents. Um, so looking at what we be going beyond what we typically can do to support the design um, and how we can further support mothers and parents so that they have more to give to their babies. So they had created some art to educate and encourage parents. Uh, here are a couple of examples. So be my voice and I listen for your voice. And they were really lovely and they had a real impact on me. Um, but I did wonder if they could be reinvented to have even more impact. So I was thinking about scale, location, color, image and typography and how I could reinvent them. So when I was writing my proposal to get into the program, this was a first stab at um, a very bold um, response, a really big photo of a baby, a powerful headline, a statistic to inform, and then uh, a link to some support for parents. At that time, this was back in 2016, it was a QR code, but. So the next few slides are a few examples that inspired the idea and the design. So thinking about the impact of image and text and how does the viewer respond? Um, advertisers have perfected the art of persuasion and how can some of those methods of visual communication be used in other ways and in this case to help patients and families. 
Uh, these are a few examples of messages of encouragement in unexpected places in the built environment. So thinking about innovative ways to add impact and affect people's experiences. And a couple of these are in Toronto as well and um, related to the CAMH campus, uh, Center for Addiction and Mental Health. So this is what really made me realize that there's something powerful going on here. Um, looking at photos of babies. So when I was pregnant with my first uh, baby, I had these strong feelings when I saw these um, photos in magazines and I just wanted to pick up the babies and cuddle them uh, and take care of them. So as I dove into my work, um, I learned that there is a real science behind this. And um, it's important to also highlight the sensitivities here because we're dealing with um, parents with babies in the NICU. So thinking about what type of um, photo would appeal um, to those parents. Who am I trying to get through to? So I looked at many uh, hundreds of photos of babies and thinking about what responses they might trigger. So this is this one really appealed to me at first, this lonely baby, and I just wanted to get in there and pick up the baby and cuddle and hold and take care of the baby. But maybe photos where you see parents bonding with babies um, might be more powerful. And then also considering um, uh, male parents and caregivers uh, and, the, and their need to bond. And then also thinking about touch uh, as an important consideration as well. So I thought um, also trying to make the message very positive, these parents are very stressed. So this was a Quebec photographer and I came across this series um, of art that's a little bit more hopeful, focuses on the hope. So these NICU babies, where are they now? So they're holding photos of themselves from, and I thought it would be a really lovely gallery wall in, in a neonatal intensive care unit with success stories of families who have come before. Uh, so a few examples of art integrated into healthcare. Um, uh, first at the top is Barcelona, a hospital in Barcelona, Barcelona obviously more religious um, subjects, um, but more contemporary as well with, um, bold color and flowers um, and some pediatric art at the bottom as well. And, and they also act as, as to help with wayfinding, they lower stress in many different ways. So now to talk a little bit more specifically about my thesis um, proposal. So the idea is to design and test a series of three installations. And this plan on the right um, shows the entry to the department, thank you. The um, family lounge is the second installation and then the nursing um, lounge as well. So the first, this is the entry to the NICU uh, and there's real opportunity here to support parents and um, kids and siblings seldom come to this area. Um, so that was a consideration for me. And again, this was that very first um, idea I had. Um, it was very bold. Um, and then I did many, many more versions um, playing, with, uh, playing with it in different ways of how that might look to get the right impact. And then the second installation, this is the current on the left, the, um, the art currently in the patient lounge. And uh, there's not really any privacy seats are all just lined up with everybody staring at one another. Um, so, Although my focus is on uh, looking at large scale graphics, I'm also interested in studying the impact of different design interventions and the impact that they can have. So in this case, maybe looking at the seating layout as well and look, studying different layers. This was just again, another study of what that wall might look like if maybe there were some more cozy banquette seat, seats with a bit more privacy and color and art, how that might look. This is a nursing lounge. Um, so again, lots of different interventions um, we could do here, but first phase would be looking at just the art and the impact that could have. And there's also opportunity here for a video installation as the moms are there for a longer period of time. So that was something we thought might be interesting. So just quickly in the next few slides, a few highlights from the theory in the, in the three disciplines. Um, the importance of aesthetics in healthcare is not a new discovery. Um, in this quote from Notes on Nursing from 1898, Florence Nightingale is highlighting the importance of aesthetics in the healing process. Uh, then uh, Sarah Williams Goldhagen um, talking also about the, the importance of disciplines coming together um, when we're designing for humans and understanding so many different layers. Um, and then just talking about how buildings shape our lives every day. Um, every space that we're in, we're affected by. 
So a prime is a non-consciously perceived environmental stimulus that can influence a person's subsequent thoughts, feelings, and responses by activating memories, emotions, and other kinds of cognitive associations. Our built environment is riddled with primes, and because it is, a design can be deliberately composed to nudge people to pick one action over another. And this is what I'm trying to do with these, with these images. Um, so then the designer must devise ways to make us shift out of our ordinary habit-driven state and attend to our surroundings. So again, I'm trying to get the attention of these stressed parents um, and stir something within them. So that's a perfect segue to um, Thaler and Sunstein. And uh, Choice Architect has the responsibility for organizing the context in which people make decisions. Um, so there's no such thing as a neutral design. A good building is not merely attractive, it works. And the insight that everything matters can be both paralyzing and empowering. And that's something I feel every day with every decision I made. And that's the reason I've come back to study more. So if choice architects want to shift their behavior and to do so with a nudge, they might simply inform people what other people are doing. So that's where some of those images with parents bonding with babies align with this idea. And then also just talking about the automatic system, how you smile when you see a cute puppy. And that uh, is the perfect link to another area of study. And this is where the neuroscience comes in that was very new to me. Um, so I came across this article on cuteness, unlocking the parental brain and beyond. So the article focuses on the parental brain and provides evidence suggesting that parents have a strong response to seeing images of infants and the statement that cuteness could be useful in designing novel interventions to strengthen troubled parent-infant relations um, aligns perfectly with my, with my thesis. Um, and they describe characteristics of cuteness um, and that there can be a disrupted response in the caregiving behaviors with facial abnormalities. Um, so that was very important in my work is these very sick babies don't have those typical cute um, characteristics. So this was another great um, book, Healing Spaces, really just focuses on um, the foundation of evidence-based design and the Academy for Neuroscience and Architecture. Um, and it's kind of important to mention uh, Ulrich's landmark study, View Through Window May Influence Patient Recovery from Surgery. Uh, and that was from 1984. And that's kind of the foundation of evidence-based design. And he found that patients with a view of trees had shorter hospital stays, took fewer pain medications, and had more positive comments in nurses' notes on their condition than those with a view of a brick wall. So I was inspired to seek knowledge in an area of study that extends across disciplines where a gap in the research exists. And if we can bridge this gap, there's the potential to have significant impact on people's health and well-being. And I'm just really excited to see where that might lead. And that's, I'll stop there. I, again, I could talk forever on this, but I'll stop there and uh, thank you so much. And this was also interesting. There was something that came out a week or so. Oh, thank you. <laughs>